Hey, what's happening guys? We are back with our 7400 Logic Series and today's IC right down there is the 74HC14. It is a Schmidt Trigger Hex Inverter. That means it has six inverters, each one with a Schmidt Trigger. And you can do some pretty cool stuff with it. For instance, if you come down here and have a look at this circuit here, and then swing up and look at the screen, why, it's a square wave generator. How did we do that? I'll show you in just a minute. Let's start with our basic IC diagram here. Yeah, I'm making it big for a reason. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it is a 14 pin IC. And like most of them that we deal with, this guy here is ground. And that guy there is VCC. So what we have in the middle here are our hex inverters. Six inverters. Hex, yes, hex means six. I know that. And now so do you. I'm just going to draw these quickly here so as not to waste our time but there's something that I want you to notice that's kind of important here and that is that all our hex inverters all of our inverters our Schmidt trigger inverters are facing in the same direction this is one two three and this is four five six so with these inputs here we call that a1 y1 then over here we have a3 y3 this would be a4 y4 and up here this would be a6 y6 just it's it's important that you keep in mind in what direction the chip operates so that you don't come up through here and then put an input on y4 and expect an output on A4 because it's not going to happen. They continue in that left-right direction. So all the inverters flow in that direction. All right, let's take a look at the data sheet. All right, so here's the data sheet for the 74HC14, the inverting Schmidt trigger. And you can see it says this device features reduced input threshold levels to allow interfacing to TTL logic levels. Inputs also include clamp diodes. This enables use of current limiting resistors to interface inputs to voltages in excess of VCC. And even though VCC is, I think, up to a positive 6 volts, see that makes it nice so we can interface with things that are much higher. Applications, wave and pulse shapers, A-stable multivibrators, monostable multivibrators. There is our ordering information, but we're coming down here to get two. Ah, the important stuff are limiting values. VCC supply voltage, minimum, negative 0.5 volts. All right. Maximum, oh, okay, it's 7 volts. I was thinking it was 6, but 7 volts. Input clamping current, plus or minus 20 milliamps. Output clamping current plus or minus 20 milliamps output current plus or minus 25 milliamps supply current 50 milliamps ground current a minimum of negative 50 milliamps storage temperature blah 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 anyway total power dissipation dissipation 500 milliwatts so that's good our recommended supply voltage is a maximum of 6 volts our V1 input voltage you know you're going to do logic level so 5 volt same with our output voltage and our ambient temperature we want it to be around a maximum of 125 degrees C 
Now we can get into some more of the esoteric stuff, but that's really not important here. A little bit of the wave shaping, some measurement points, transfer characteristics, and all the other non-exciting stuff from the data sheet. Let's go back and take a look at our circuit that we put together here. I'm going to pull off the scope here just so we can get a better look at what we've got going on. Okay, so from our power rail, we have a uh, one microfarad ceramic cap across it. We have our 74HC14 here with uh, pin 14 going to ground or to BCC. Pin 7 going to ground, also pin 5 going to ground, pin 8 and, and pin 10 going to ground. Then what we have here is another one microfarad capacitor coming from ground, growing through an alternating pair of diodes. You can see this diode is facing this way, this diode is facing this way, and they go to the two outer legs of this 10K potentiometer. The wiper comes back and it feeds into pin 2, our uh, A, that's our uh, Y1, and our A1 is this one right here. It comes before this particular diode and it feeds from 2, or no, it feeds into 1. And then our pin 2 also pin, feeds into pin 3, and we grab our output on pin 4. So if we power back up the oscilloscope, and just let me show you, we're putting three volts into this guy. Just waiting for the oscilloscope to power up. Oh, of course, if I hooked up the oscilloscope, we would have a much better chance of actually observing what is going on here. I'm not called the absent-minded professor for nothing. All right, so let me rotate you up here a little bit. All right, so there's our scope. And you can see we are getting a 10, let's call it an 11 kilohertz signal there, square wave. Bring up my measurements, my duty cycle. 57.2 and by adjusting that pot I can adjust the duty cycle let's try and swing it in here for as close to a 50% duty cycle as possible come on baby oh what happened there Got some major strangeness going on there. Interesting, the whole thing just crapped out on me. I wonder. That's universal troubleshooting. Power it off. Power it back on. There we go. Okay, so we're back to 66% uh, duty cycle. And if I try and bring it down. it really starts to collapse when I, okay, there we go, 50%. Or close enough for government work, to 50%. So it seems to be a little bit unstable. But uh, there we go, we're holding it. Peak to peak of three volts. About 48% on the duty cycle. So it is a variable duty cycle. A square wave generator. I'm just going to adjust it back to its midpoint value here. And if we go back up and take a look on the screen. There you go. Now, to adjust the frequency, we need to adjust this capacitor down here. Sorry for the jump cut there. I had to cough. Okay, I have replaced our 1 microfarad ceramic with a 10 microfarad 
electrolytic capacitor and if we come in now and look at our signal we are getting uh, two Hertz out of it I just hit the auto set there let's see what we get <laughs> two Hertz doesn't want to play nice on two Hertz let's uh let's try something else here okay I replaced that 10 micro with like this one measures out to 64 nano farads and if we come up here and take a look at it we're getting uh, about 8 kilohertz out of it and of course we can still adjust our duty cycle no problem and one thing you will notice is that out of these polyester type capacitors they are much more stable than those cheap little ceramic capacitors so what else is a schmidt trigger good for besides making vibrators well as we saw in the data sheet it's good for wave shaping and when i worked at bayer we used them to uh, debounce buttons because the schmidt trigger takes a slowly changing input signal slowly changing input signal now that means basically an analog signal it takes a slowly changing input signal and outputs a sharp signal a digital signal one that jumps from 0 to 5 or from 5 to 0 or 3.3 .3 to 0 or 1 point you know you get the idea it jumps from low to high high to low in a very short amount of time as opposed to an analog signal which takes its time going transitioning from low to high some some sort of like a sine wave but the schmidt trigger is also useful like i said for debouncing because when it sees all those fluctuations about zero it doesn't trigger until you pass the hysteresis point uh, if you want to know more about that i have a video on the schmidt trigger which i will link to down below but that's it for today we played with the uh, 74HC14, the second chip in our 7400 Logic series. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up, comment, share. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm out of here. Peace. Yeah.